Hey everybody, in this video I'm going over how I restored a car battery. Uh, this one actually retails for like $150 to $200. And it was just manufactured about two and a half years ago, but it was holding almost no charge. And basically what happens is these batteries have lead plates in them and they have sulfate crystals build up on them. And the way the batteries work is the lead needs to be exposed to the water sulfuric acid solution that they're dunked in for a chemical reaction to take place on the lead plate. When there's the sulfate crystals on a lead plate, that's a spot that you can't have chemical reaction occur, or at least not much, and then you don't have much charging capacity, and you probably also do not have as high of a voltage or as high of cranking amps. So I had this car a battery accidentally fully drained a few times, basically, because we had a vampire draw in the car that we didn't know about, and that, pretty much sulfated it. Uh, plus, a lot of batteries nowadays too just tend to sulfate faster. I'm not exactly sure why, but I've, I've had multiple incidents where batteries only last two and a half years to maybe three years in vehicles that just happened in one of my vans. So that's unfortunate, but at least I'm gonna show you how I was able to fix this. This has been sitting for three days and we're at 12.6 volts roughly, just floating voltage. Um, there's no load on it right now. Um, and it also did not charge recently. It's been three days since it's fully charged and the voltage just went down to here. Originally, it was kind of hovering at 12 volts, just flat, which is uh, not good because when these batteries are fully charged and they're just sitting, they should have a charged range of about 12.6 to 12.8 volts. So this was a uh, way too low just setting voltage. Uh, so the way you get rid of the sulfate crystals is you just warm the battery up. Uh, the easiest way for me to do that was to actually use a car heater. I'll have this in the description of the video. This is a Rode Pro one. It's about 300 watts. So it pulls about 20 to 23 amps or so when you have just 12.8 volts feeding it, but the voltage drops so the amperage might actually go up. This is a ceramic based heater. So when the voltage that it's receiving goes down, to compensate it will draw <clears throat> it will draw more amperage so that's kind of interesting um regular resistance based heaters don't do that they'll, they'll actually draw less amps when the voltage goes down uh, but i used that as a load on the battery to drain it while simultaneously heating the battery up because the, the way you get the sulfate crystals to break off is you heat the battery up to about 100 fahrenheit externally then the internal temperature will be a little bit warmer than that so the way I recovered the battery is you need to get the lead plates warm on the inside. And one way you can do this is by drawing from the battery rapidly and charging it rapidly because that creates a lot of waste heat. And that's mostly what I did here. Uh, this battery though is 46 pounds. That's a lot of thermal mass. And my charger over here is only a 15 amp charger. This battery is probably a 60 amp hour battery. So realistically it wasn't heating up a lot inside from waste heat. It was taking hours and I was going up maybe a degree Fahrenheit or two externally on the battery per hour. That was taking forever. So what I did is I have these two loads here. One of them is a space heater for a car. I'll put this in the description of the video. This is a Rode Pro 300 watt heater. I'll be putting that in my Jeep because my heater core I had a bypass. Um, and I have this uh, power inverter right here that I used to run a crock pot. So this is a 150 watt crock pot. It's extremely old, but still good. This is my voltmeter that I used to track the voltage of the battery. You can see it's sitting at 12.6. Um, and what I ended up doing is I thermally insulated the battery with these towels here. And I just had this heater blow towards the battery. And I was monitoring the external temperature. And I was finding that it was only like 80 Fahrenheit, 84 Fahrenheit for a while. Eventually, once it got warm, it finally got up to like 96 Fahrenheit. And right around when the battery is 100 Fahrenheit externally, like on all sides, then you pretty much know that the inside of the battery is also about 100 Fahrenheit. And that's kind of like the magic number for breaking those sulfate crystals down off the lead plates. And then you start recovering capacity rapidly. Um, so you gotta remember while I was doing that, I was drawing load off the battery. There's gonna be a lot of internal resistance in the lead plates. 
So those lead plates were actually a lot warmer than the 100 Fahrenheit I was reading on the outside. Um, so what's interesting is when the battery still wasn't running this combination of load for very long, it still wasn't taking super long to charge initially, but when I started recovering capacity right around the magic number of like 96 to 100 Fahrenheit, um, then it started taking really long to charge and it also took forever to start draining the battery. So that was basically when I realized that I had won. So I hope this uh, video helps you. Um, obviously, uh, be safe when recovering batteries, that sort of thing. Like here, I was watching this the whole time, you know, because like these towels here, they're, they're flammable. So obviously you need to make sure that uh, they're not gonna catch on fire or something if you spark things up. So you gotta be careful with that. We're not working with high temperatures here or anything. I just got the battery up to like 100 Fahrenheit to finally get the sulfate crystals to break down. It doesn't need to be super hot. Um, and you need to make sure at least that the battery temperature is thorough. So I'll go ahead and remove like the towels off the back here. What helped was I kind of pulled the towels off a little bit so there's an air gap around the battery so the heat from the heater could really come around better. And you know you're good when the entire battery on the outside, the side walls at least, read about 100 Fahrenheit. That's the correct temperature to do this at uh, if you get those sulfate crystals to break down um, while also drawing a high load on the battery. Um, in this case, I was drawing about 40 amps, so uh, nothing too high for this battery, which is rated for about 60 amp hours. Uh, but if you have a small battery, basically, then you probably do not want to draw more amps than what the amp hour rating uh, calls for, basically. That could be uh, concerning. And you just want to make sure you monitor battery temperature. If the, the battery starts getting like warmer than like 105 Fahrenheit or something, then that's definitely grounds to remove any sort of towels you're using to help get the battery warmer quicker. Um, and just let it cool in the air, basically. And maybe re reduce your charging and discharging rate a bit so you don't further overheat the battery. Because what you don't want to have happen is something called plate buckling. Um, if you, uh, It's really hard to have happen in batteries like this because... They have thicker lead plates. They're designed to be starting batteries. They're kind of designed to be abused in terms of high amperage draw temporarily. Um, so it's potentially harder to have these plates buckle. Uh, but in some batteries, if you change the temperature of the plates too rapidly, you can end up with buckling. Or even if you discharge them too much, the same thing can happen. Uh, so this battery got warmed up to temperature over the course of like two hours, maybe that sort of thing. Uh, so it wasn't just like real fast and I also was not overdrawing by any means. I would stop drawing from the battery when I hit about 11 volts. Sometimes I let it drop down to like 10.5 or so and then uh, st start recharging it again basically. But yeah, I hope this video helps you because it saved me a ton of money. This battery is going to go right back in my car now and I'm not buying a $150 battery replacement, which is also crazy. Because uh, in the state of Ohio, too, you get, there's a $10 core charge. So I would have to return this battery and get $10 back to then cover my $10 core charge for the new battery. Otherwise, you're up to $160, and then you have tax and stuff included as well. So it's just uh, kind of a nuisance. You can get expensive and go into the $200 range for just a battery, like, real fast. Uh, so hopefully this video helps you. Uh, and yeah, I will go ahead and list like this heater and stuff in the description of the video just in case anyone's interested in that.